Hi there, I'm Farida and welcome back to the Dental Radiology. Okay, today we're going to talk about the part two of panoramic anatomy landmarks with emphasis on bony landmarks. On the part one video, we talk about what is a panoramic radiograph and that a panoramic radiograph is like opening the skull and looking at it. The middle part looks like an anterior posterior radiograph and the sides look like lateral radiographs. We talked about six zones that we can divide a panoramic radiograph in six zones. So while reading that panoramic radiograph and interpreting it, you will miss any part. We talked about the anatomical landmarks in zone number four, five, and six. If you missed that video, go to the playlist of Panoramic and take a peek. Today we're going to talk about zone number one, two, and three. As you see, these three zooms are in the middle. It's like looking at the skull from the front view. Okay, let's start our anatomical landmarks in the front zoom from the maxillary sinus. The maxillary sinus can be detected as a cortical bone. You can see it in the schematic view. And you can see in this panoramic radiograph as a cortical bone. So it can sometimes be pneumatized in the alveolar process. The maxillary sinus should be clear and radiolucent. It's very important because if it's radiopathic, it can sometimes show that there is a disease starting inside the maxillary sinus. You can see in the schematic view that the maxillary sinus in, is inside the maxillary bone. The zygomatic process of the maxillary bone that sutures with uh, the zygomatic bone and is superimposed in the maxillary sinus as a U-shaped cortical bone. So you can sometimes detect it in the panoramic radiograph. The orbital wall is in the top of the maxillary sinus and the inferior wall of the orbit is intact with the superior wall of the maxillary sinus so it's very important that you can detect that uh, cortical bone and it's very important to be intact so sometimes in the fractures this inferior orbital wall can be fractured and some parts of it can go inside the maxillary sinus. Inferior orbital canal starts from the inferior wall of the orbit and goes through inside the maxillary bone and comes out from the inferior orbital foramen. So it can sometimes be detected inside the maxillary sinus. The lateral wall of the nasal fossa is in contact with the medial wall of the maxillary sinus. You can see in the schematic view and on the panoramic radiograph. From the lateral wall of the nasal fossa, bony protuberance can start. You can see it in this skull. They're called the middle concha and the inferior concha. Mostly the inferior concha is seen in the panoramic radiograph. You can see in the schematic view and you can see in this panoramic radiograph. The concha is covered with the mucosa and underneath the concha is a space that this space is called the inferior concha maatus. The nasal septum, it's a bony part that's between the nasal holes. It's made of 
the vomer bone and the perpendicular plate of the etmoid bone. You can see in this panoramic radiograph. Beneath the nasal septum, you can see the anterior nasal spine. That is a bony projection between the two parts of the maxilla when they join together. You can see in this panoramic radiograph as a opaque bone that's kind of like a triangular shape. The incisive foramen is beneath the anterior nasal spine between the roots of the maxillary centrals and is as a round radiolucent shadow. You can see it in the panoramic radiograph. It's not very typical in this panoramic radiograph, but when you see a round kind of lucent shape beneath uh, the anterior nasal spine between the roots of the central incisors, uh, you can note it's an anatomical landmark that's called the incisive foramen. The internal oblique ridge, or it's sometimes called the mylohyoid ridge, is a single opaque line underneath the mandibular molars is located in the lingual of the mandible that the mylohyoid muscles attach to it. Beneath the mylohyoid bridge, we have the submandibular gland fossa. It's a radiolucent shadow. And it's because of depression of the bone in this part for the gland. It's kind of a thinner bone, so it's kind of radiolucent in the panoramic radiograph. You can see this lucent part. It's a depression for the submandular gland. The mental foramen is located in the anterior part of the inferior alveolar canal. So you can see it's this opening in the buccal surface of the mandible. And in the panoramic radiograph, it's round radiolucent with a cortical bone around it. And you should not mistake it with a practical lesion in this part. The lingual foramen is beneath the central incisors in the mandible. It's sometimes you can see it in the panoramic radiograph, but because of the superimposition of the gust image of the cervical vertebra in this part, sometimes it's not very well detected. But if you see around the really same part and beneath the central incisors, you can think about a normal anatomic landmark for the lingual foramen. The mental ridge is this bony protuberance in the skull that can sometimes be detected in the panoramic radiograph. You can see in the same shape. Okay, that was all for today. Hope you liked this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Press the bell button for getting notifications for the next video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share it with your friends. If you have any questions, comment down below. I'll be delighted to answer it.